David, thank you very much for joining us on EGGY TV. Today we're going to focus in on the dynamic environment of the NHS. A million new patient cases every 36 hours. That must mean to be able to stem that demand, you need dynamic digital platforms. Tell me a bit about your experience. The NHS, uh, I think, has progressed quite a long way down its digitisation journey over the last five years. There's been a, certainly been an increase in pace. Many trusts have implemented a variety of either single vendor or multi-vendor electronic patient records, and as is the case with my current trust, Haverstock and Portman. Uh, as we've gone through that journey, we found that those big multi-vendor platforms have actually created complications within the system uh, and while it has helped to improve patient journeys, while it has helped us deal with the vastly increasing numbers of patients the NHS deals with, uh, it has also created challenges in terms of burden on clinicians and our nursing staff and on administrators within the NHS. You have to be able to test those digital platforms. Your clinicians need to know how to manage that entire patient uh, experience. How is it that you are enabling them to do so in a frictionless way? I think the, the systems uh, tend to be very configurable. Uh, they tend to therefore have quite a burden in terms of iterative change and testing. Uh, the systems don't necessarily perfectly match the clinical process of each trust. They do vary quite considerably. Uh, so there is a need for us to iteratively improve the systems over time. There is a need for us to tailor both the system and evolving processes together. Uh, Again, the systems we've dealt with in the past in the NHS have perhaps been slightly more challenging, have been slower to change. Again, over the last five years, we've moved to a model where uh, systems are more frequently changed. There is a need, of course, for rigorous testing as part of that. There is obviously a, a degree of risk in terms of direct patient care with many of our systems. Uh, and we need to assure ourselves that we are able to more quickly improve our systems while maintaining that uh, low level of patient risk. Indeed. So talking about the rigorous testing uh, is a nice segue to talk about your experience with eggplant. So in terms of our use of eggplant, uh, we've been looking at it from both a testing uh, and a robotic process automation perspective. Uh, if I start on the testing, uh, so a current trust uses a system called Advanced Care Notes. Uh, it's a very well-developed system for mental health setting. Again, current trust uh, sees primarily mental health patients. The system is highly configurable uh, and we have an in-house development team that is making those iterative changes alongside the need of our clinicians. That means there is a much tighter testing schedule than we've needed previously where we were waiting perhaps for a quarterly major update from the supplier. So each iterative change needs testing and we've been able to use eggplant to significantly reduce the burden on our development staff in terms of that testing and also to an extent to increase the amount of uh, clinician driven testing that we're undertaking rather than testing systems from a, purely from a technologist perspective. So you mentioned robotic process automation. This is a huge market that is seeing dramatic growth. Uh, but as it relates to healthcare, how are you utilising that particular technology? I think there's a couple of key areas that are for our current use cases mm -hmm. and then an area we're growing into at the moment. Uh, so for the current use cases, uh, a number of the legacy systems within the NHS uh, have tended not to have particularly good open architectures for their data. Uh, very few of the legacy systems have APIs through which we can access our own data and it tends to be stored in a proprietary form. Uh, the robotics platform allows us to interact with that data through the front end of those legacy systems. It allows us to therefore automate the transfer of data between systems even where APIs don't exist. Mm -hmm. Our second use case then has tended to focus more on the burden that exists on our clinicians and our clinical administrative staff. Uh, within those systems, uh, there tends to be fairly arduous processes for some of the clinician interactions. Uh, the robotics platform has allowed us to focus down on the amount of work a clinician needs to do in the system for any particular clinical action and try and reduce that burden down. So rather than clicking in various different sections of an electronic patient record to undertake a task, they can submit the information they need onto one form and the robot then goes and does that within one or more uh, subsidiary clinical systems. 
Well, one of the stories we're telling and is being met with great success is the ability for eggplant to tie together a complete process. So irrespective of the architecture or the age of the architecture, however legacy you, you want to talk, irrespective of the device, um, OS, or any of those distinguishing factors, you're able to test the entire work stream from the initial input all the way through to the net result. Um, and it sounds like you're getting to that point using eggplant for this particular use case. Indeed. So our first use case with eggplant was actually to deal with something that was a fairly administrative process within the trust, albeit it was one that touched multiple trust systems. So my current trust, Avstock and Portman, has uh, a significant portion of its business is education as, uh, as opposed to clinical. Uh, we therefore have a student information management system and many of our clinicians are also our faculty. So in terms of planning our activity, there's quite a fairly complex process that involves scheduling patient activity alongside student activity. Uh, the Eggplant platform has allowed us to work across multiple systems, a student information management system, a timetabling system, and our electronic patient record, mapping different activity types as we try and plan the best time for various activities to happen. Brilliant. So if you think of that triangle of cost, quality, and time, you're able to really just make sure that your quality is so much more accurate. Mm -hmm. um, time to effectiveness is completely reduced and so that people can get about their work in a very efficient manner. Indeed, and I think we also recognize the downstream benefits of a higher quality of data entry. Mm -hmm. uh, so many of our clinical processes rely on a good quality of data and a timeliness of data entry, and the robotic tool has allowed us to improve both. In terms of the cost element then, David, it is quite imperative for you to be able to really sweat the asset if you'd like. Having one platform, means you've got one skill set that you've invested in. Uh, talk a little bit about how Tavistock and Portman are utilizing the eggplant platform to really drive a saving in cost. I think the, the big differentiator for us has been the reusability of the platform for different use cases and the fact that we can architect the platform to interact with the systems once, uh, so interact with our electronic patient record and interact with our student information management system, and those interactions then are usable for both the robotic processing and for the testing. Uh, it also means we've been able to build platforms out that are reasonable across multiple use cases within the trust. So the first two use cases we built uh, have been architected in such a way that they can process multiple job types within our electronic patient record. Uh, we have an architecture surrounding eggplant that feeds various different data types in. We don't have to rebuild different interactions for every different use case. And as far as skills are, are concerned, to try and make sure that you are giving your people one skill set uh, and not switching between applications or having to reteach themselves applications. How have you seen efficiencies there? I think the big benefit we've seen is within our informatics team, the eggplant platform uses a similar code base to our other systems. And actually the, the, the way that the eggplant interfaces are built through very much a graphical interface has meant that we're not necessarily reliant on highly specialized development skills for all aspects of the process. We're able to use business analysts to build the majority of our flows through eggplant with some support from our higher end development team within the trust as and when needed, rather than that being required for all aspects of every build. No, I do like that point because there's this um, groundswell of what they're calling the citizen developer. So everybody now has the skills, business side uh, or really you know, technical developer sets need to be able to interact with these tools to try and make their work so much easier uh, and more productive through the day. Indeed. I mean, the, the challenge for us in the past has often been that translation piece between the specialists in this area, our clinicians and our faculty, business analysts and developers and technical staff. Uh, the benefit of Eggplant for us is we've able, been able to push that understanding of how to build the tool to the clinical staff, to the faculty and to business analysts with support from the developers. It has certainly eased that translation challenge. Oh good, so you're crossing the chasm then. Brilliant. So if we now think of the universe that is the NHS and the digitization thereof, what are your thoughts for uh, getting there faster? I think there's a combination of opportunities in the NHS. So uh, 
most trusts, as I say, are fairly well progressed with their digitization journeys in that they have most processes moved across to a digital platform. Uh, what many trusts haven't yet achieved is a move from digitization onto digital transformation. Uh, so looking at ways we can uh, interact digital first with our, with our patients. Uh, there is a need as part of that to open up a variety of access points for patients. Some of those are being provided, starting to be provided nationally. Some of those are being provided by individual organisations uh, and critically we need to make sure that all of that data can flow in a consolidated way and a secure way back into central data sets for clinical decision making. Uh, the robotics tools, uh, because of the, the breadth of the systems that exist out there, it is incredibly challenging to build integrations through traditional APIs. Uh, we are working on that as, as, as a whole NHS in terms of open standards, but while that work is ongoing, the robotics bridge the gap. Brilliant. So to try and make sure that you attain your patient outcomes and make sure that there's a positive patient outcomes, being able to really drive transformation that isn't going to disrupt your current process but aid it is very, very important. Indeed. Well, thank you very much for spending the time with us, David. It was lovely chatting to you today. Thank you.